Hello everyone, welcome back to our video class here at csecmathtutor.com. In this lesson, we are looking at ratios. We have some objectives to write, simplify, and share in a ratio, and also to use ratios to answer questions, of course. Now, what exactly is a ratio? A ratio in mathematics is a comparison of two or more things. A ratio tells us how much of one thing there is compared to another thing. And this is important to remember in our discussion of ratios. A ratio tells us how much of one thing there is compared to another. Ratios are normally written in, written in the form A colon B, and we interpret that as A to B. For example, we may say a ratio of something to something is 3 to 4, or we may say a ratio is 5 to 9. Ratios can be simplified, they can be multiplied, they can be divided. And so we will use some of those skills today to talk about how we can answer some questions. Now, I know many students find ratios difficult and confusing. So, in this lesson, I'm going to be as non threatening as possible to show you, to disarm you of that fear, and to show you that ratios simply, ratios are not a difficult topic. All right? So, let's start off with our first question here. Angela invested 200, let's start from the top. Angela and John decided to start a business. Angela invested $240,000 and John invested $160,000. This is a model that comes up in POB all the time where they talk about partnerships and how to, how to share profits. So this is how the money was invested. It turns out that the company made $15,000 and they are deciding how much should John's share of the profit be. So let's write down something. We have Angela. And then we have JN for John. Now, how much money was invested? Angela invested $240,000 and John invested $160,000. Now, this is the ratio, so let's write it. $240,000 to $160,000. But as we said, Ratios must be written in their simplest form possible. Now, how can we write this ratio in its simplest form possible? We can do that by dividing by the highest number that we can divide these by. So let's start first by dividing these by 10,000. All right. When we divide by 10,000 here, we end up with 24 to 16. And we can still divide. So we can divide this one by 8 again. So let's divide by 8. And 24 divided by 8 gives us 3. And 16 divided by 8 gives us 2. So the simplest form of this ratio, 240,000 to 160,000, is 3 to 2. So the money is shared in the ratio 3 to 2. 3 to 2 is important. When we add 3 plus 2, we get 5. That tells us that Angela will be getting 3 fifths or 3 parts of the profit and John will be getting the other 2 parts or 2 fifths of the profit, whatever the profit is. So here we notice that the profit that they made was $15,000. That means that Angela is going to get three-fifths of this money and John is going to get two-fifths of the same money. We have two ways to do this. If you like fractions and you want to use fractions, we're talking about John's money now. We can say John is going to get two-fifths. So let's talk about John and his share of the money. John will get two-fifths of this money. That's two-fifths of $15,000. And doing some calculations here, 5 into 15 goes 3. That gives us $3,000. And 2 times 3,000 there gives us $6,000. So John would get $6,000. And 
Angela would get the remaining $9,000 to make up the $15,000. If you don't want to do it this way, then you can take the $15,000. And since we know that it's divided into five parts, divide that by five. Now, 15000 divided by five gives us $3,000. So John is going to get two parts out of this $15,000. One part is 3000 so John is going to get 2 times $3,000, which again comes back to $6,000. So, um, so you can use whichever, whichever method you prefer. So two-fifths or divide it first and then multiply, whichever method makes you feel more comfortable. This is one way in which you can use ratios. So you can write them down, simplify them, and share something in that ratio. Of course, if you wanted to find Angela's amount, then we would simply say three times 2,000, three times 3,000 rather, in this part. Now let's look at another question which asks something a little differently. Ratios again. A coach party traveled to Europe for holiday. The number of days they spent in France, Spain, and Italy were divided in the ratio three to four to five. They spent nine days in France. How many days was the complete journey? So here we have a, a ratio with a question, and they didn't give us a total to share. In this question, we got 15,000 to share. In this question, we do not know the total number of days for the holiday, but we can find it given ratios. So let's look at the, um, the countries that they went to. France, they went to Spain, and they went to Italy. Now we know the ratio of, of time that they spent in each, um, in each of these countries. So France is three, Spain, four, and Italy, five. So these are the number of days that they spent in each of these, the, not the number of days. This is the ratio of the days that they spent in each of the countries. Three, four and five. Notice that if you add three plus four plus five, you get five plus four, nine, 10, 11, 12, you get 12, which means that three twelves of the time or three twelve of the time was spent in this country, four twelve was spent in Spain and five twelve was spent in Italy. Now, what do we know about the number of days they spent in France? They spent nine days in France. That's very important. So if they spent nine days in France, how many days did they spend in Spain and how many days in Italy? Now, we said earlier, ratios can be multiplied. And this is important in working out this question without bursting a blood vessel or anything like that. No, if they spend nine days in France, the question is, what number do we need to multiply three by to get nine? Well, as you should remember, three times three makes nine, or you could say nine divided by three gives you three. So three times three gives us nine, which means that the number of days they spent in um, Spain, we'd have to multiply everything here by three. Three times three to make nine. Three times four here gives us 12. And three times five here gives us 15. So once we know that we had multiplied this number three by three to get nine, we can multiply all of them by three across the board. And so they spent nine days in France, 12 days in Spain, and 15 days in Italy. Now, the first question was, how many days was the complete journey? The complete journey, then, is the sum of these days. 9 plus 12 plus 15, and that gives us 36 days. That's part 1. We could also find part 1 by saying, all right, since when we divided this 9 by that 3, we end up with 3. We could take that total 12 and multiply it by 3, and we would still get over 36 days. 
So that's another way to look at it. We have, uh, we have already answered part two. How many days did they spend in Italy? They spent that amount of days in Italy, 15 days. So part two, already answered, 15 days in Italy. So again, how many, or what number would you need to multiply three by to get nine? It is three, and so once you know that, you can multiply right across the board. Many ratio questions are set up like this, in which the ratio is given, and a part of the answer is given, and they ask you to use it to find the total. This is a very simple model to find that total and to find the other missing parts. Let's try it again with this question. Concrete tiles are, are made using buckets of cement and sand and gravel. And this is the ratio. 1 to 4 to 6. So we have cement, we have sand, we have gravel. Now let's set up our model. Cement, sand, and gravel. Okay. Now we know the ratio. The ratio is 1 to 4 to 6. All right. Now, question one says, how many buckets of gravel are needed for four buckets of cement? So if we have four here, we need to ask ourselves the question, what number do we need to multiply this number by to get four? And the obvious answer is we need to multiply it by four. So four times one gives us four. And that means we are multiplying the entire numbers in the ratio by four. So now we go here and we say 4 times 4, and that gives us 16. 4 times 6, and that gives us 24. Now, let's answer the question. How many buckets of gravel are needed for 4 buckets of cement? The answer would be 24 um, buckets of gravel. Here's another part of the question. If 20 buckets of sand were used, so we are at part two now. If 20 buckets of sand are used, this is sand, so we need to write sand here. 20 buckets of sand are used. Let me use a different color. So 20 buckets of sand are used. How many um, buckets of cement and how many buckets of gravel do we need? We're going to ask the same question. What number? Remember the numbers in the ratio are 1, 4, and 6. Here they are. 1, 4, and 6. So we need to ask ourselves the question, what number do we need to multiply 4 by to get 20? You could reverse that and say 20 divided by 4, and that would be 5. So we need to multiply 4 by 5 to get 20. So 5 times 4 give us 20. And so then we need to multiply everything by 5. So 5 times 1, 5 times 4, and 5 times 6. Now 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 times 6 is 30. And that answers the question for us. So 5 times 1 gives us 5 cement, 5 buckets. And 5 times 6 gives us 30. 30 buckets of gravel. And so a seemingly difficult question can be answered simply in this way by following this simple model. Now let's look at one more question. The sum of money, the sum of $2,500 is divided among Peter, Queen, and Raymond. Raymond received half. Peter received $312.50, and Queen received the remainder. All right, so we have three persons, Peter, Queen, and Raymond. Let's write them down. Peter, Queen, and Raymond.
All right. Now, Peter received um, half the money. Now, what is half of $2,500? So a half of $2,500 gives us $1,250. So that is um, Raymond's amount. Raymond received half of the money. Peter received $312.50. So we can write that in as well. $312.50. And Queen received the remainder. Now to find Queen's amount, we can simply do a subtraction. So it's $2,500. So we can add up um, this amount, $312.50. $1,250 and subtract it from 2005, or you could subtract $312.50 from $1,250. Either way, you would still get your answer. So, in doing that, we realize that um, Queen would get $937.50. So, $1,250. Minus $312.50. And that would give you the amount that Queen would get here. So Raymond's amount is $1,250. Queen's amount is $9, is sorry, $937.50. And now the second, the third part of the question says the ratio in which the 2500 was divided. Now what ratio was it divided in? Um, we know that these numbers, as is, are in a ratio. So th um, let's write it out, and then we try to simplify it. So Peter, Queen, and Raymond. And the ratio as it is, is 312.5 to 937 .5. So we could put our colon there to 1,250. And since this person gets the smallest share, then that should then just let us divide by this number. So we can divide by 312.5. He um, Peter gets the smallest share. 312.5 divide by 312. 0.5. When we divide that, we get 1. When we divide this, we get 3. And when we divide this, we get 4. So the ratio in which the money was divided among the three persons was 1 to 3 to 4. Ratios come up on your paper 2. When they happen on paper 2, it usually comes up in question 1 that deals with computation and, and consumer arithmetic. So it would come up in that question one. But ratio also comes up in question on the multiple choice paper. So you need to be prepared for ratio. Either you will see it on your paper two and paper one. But if you don't see it on paper two, it's definitely on paper one. So practice, find more past paper questions to, to develop your skills in the paper two, paper three section of the website, csecmathtwitter.com. On that page, those papers are, those questions are organized by topic. So it makes it easier for you to um, practice a particular topic. And the multiple choice questions are also organized by topic. So it makes it easy for you to practice um, um, the, the area that you want to deal with. Answer as many multiple choice questions as you can because those will help you as you um, prepare for your exam. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share with somebody who's doing the exam. Share with somebody who needs to learn, who's having difficulty. Continue to grow and, and develop as you prepare.